think we are now um, switching to um, Alex and uh, Tia Ying's paper. Um, I don't know who will who will start, but uh, something is happening. Hi everyone, can you see the screen? It's white at the moment. Is that supposed to be like that? Oh, let me see if we zoom here. Okay. Yes, now we, now we see slides. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to everyone at different places. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present our paper at the symposium. Uh, I'm Alex Wong, an assistant professor at OSU. So the original idea of our paper can be traced back to 2003 when I wrote my qualifying exam paper. But only recently my co-author Tian and I have focused on developing it really. Uh, thanks largely to my co-author's essential contribution and her RE's competent support. So we would like to set the expectation correctly for our audience. The work is in a relatively early stage, uh, but we are, uh, the paper is being assigned as one of the OSU working paper series. Uh, we take a slight turn from the imitation topic and our outcome variable here is reflecting competitive actions by firms. The topic of the paper is a categorization view of inter-firm rivalry and our empirical context is Apple's official app store. So let's start by defining some key terminologies. Uh, building on the recent development of the categorization literature in this paper, we define categories as shared cognitive frameworks useful for navigating and organizing complex realities by grouping similar entities together to simplify our understanding of what surrounds us. Empirically reflected is the app's product categories. And we define category dynamics as the whole life course of a category from its emergence to diffusion and possibly long periods of widespread usage to ultimately disuse. And our focus in this paper is on the initial phase of creations of new categories. So we think in this literature, previous research suggests that new category creations and organizations' category memberships both matter in terms of shaping their behaviors and performance. But most of the previous research has focused on the perspective of audience, such as uh, customers, investors, and stock analysts. When studying the category's disciplining role, what is less understood is how organizations' competitive actions are shaped by category dynamics that I mentioned above. Uh, and the pioneer work by Park and his colleagues utilized competitors' perspective and proposed that rivalry can be formed based on attributes such as technologies and geographic locations. But in spite of its merits, their work has two limitations that call for further research. First, though very insightful, Park's work took a very static view of the category system, or what he says is at the category hierarchy. Second, their analysis remained at the stage of rivalry formation, but not really extended to the actual competitive actions. We thus intend to extend the work pioneered by Park. And the literature gap left by Park, early work that is lacking a dynamic analysis, we think can be addressed by integrated insights from the competitive dynamics literature. This literature was influenced heavily by the Austrian School of Economics and hypercompetition, and it has devoted substantial attention to predict intensity of firms' competitive behaviors, and most research has been studied in the established industry settings, such as airlines, automotives, or insurance. And our understanding of how firms compete in new and knowledge-intensive industry settings, such as uh, the mobile app market, remain rather limited. And this neglect is quite unfortunate because motivations and ways to compete uh, tend to be different across industry settings. Moreover, this literature has paid little attention to categorization structure and its impact on inter-firm competition. Therefore, moving beyond this static assumption of the market structure seen in literature such as strategic group, we adopt a more category dynamics view and study the following two questions. First, how do new category creations shape organizations' competitive intensity? And second, how does the competitive tension between the focal firm and rival would strengthen or weaken such impacts? And our first hypothesis is that organizations will compete more intensely in new categories than in established product categories, and for a few reasons. The first one is, while the competitive landscape in established categories tend to be relatively stable, crowded, but organized, but competition in New categories are not established, so that organizations tend to continuously move in search of the next big thing and compete head to head with each other. That's where the imitation comes in. Second, learning is particularly important in new categories. For instance, previous research found that competitors are more likely to follow each other's moves for exploration type of drugs in pharmaceutical industry, which reflect our logic in the new market segment. 
Third, while previous research found that sphere of influence or mutual forbearance can be established in more mature markets, uh, such as the airline automotives, but organizations in new markets will have more latitude to launch their competitive actions because norms of competition are not yet established and retaliation is of course less of a concern. Consequently, we predict that new category creation will have a positive impact on competitive intensity. We we'll then next unpack how this effect in this hypothesis would be amplified or weakened by factors that may shape the competitive tension felt by the focal firm with its rivals. And our overarching argument is that tension enabling factors will strengthen this effect and tension mitigating factors will weaken it. So given the available time here, uh, I'm just gonna cover the tension mitigating factor, identity ambiguity will identify it. Many studies in the category literature have suggested that audiences will devaluate or ignore organizations that cannot be easily categorized, the so-called illegitimacy discount effect. Uh, but a small group of study as cited here, have started to look at the bright side of having an ambiguous identity. We join the latter group, but take a different turn by looking at the perspective of competitors. We argue that ambiguous identity of an organization's products will lead to less tension with its rivals, which is kind of obvious, but uh, here we formally propose the following uh, hypothesis that identity ambiguity, ambiguity will weaken the positive impact of category creation on competitive intensity. First, when a product in an organization is struggling in multiple categories, we not only expect that it will confuse the audience, such as the customers, but at the same time, it will also cause difficulties for competitors to form a deep understanding of the company's strategies and tactics. So that's from the perspective aspect. Second one is organizations with products that straddle multiple categories tend to be diluted in terms of their strategic focus and that stretch their limited resources. This is akin to the logic in the diversification literature where scholars found that over diversification actually can harm firm performance. As a result, rivals would not take such uh, companies' products seriously as threats and therefore would not mobilize resources to fight with such companies. Essentially, we're predicting that ambiguity will weaken the effect of category creation on competitive intensity. The setting of our study is Apple's official app store. According to this company, the store had 1.5 million apps in 2015, and we completed a very liberal data collection effort around the same year, and resulting very proximate population level data uh, equals to 1.44 million unique apps as of 2015. So within this uh, study time range from 2008 to 2015, we identified three category creation events at the basic level of the category system. We then identified all the apps in these three categories, three newly created categories, and the corresponding app developers, all other products in other established categories. Uh, to narrow our sample further for the research design, we restricted it to apps that were launched before the new category were created. This would result in the sample that we use in a difference in difference analysis where the treated apps are those that were released before the new category creations, but reclassified into the new categories by the platform owner or by the developers. And control two apps. Minutes. Uh, two minutes. Okay. Uh, and control apps would be those that are released by the same set of developers before the new category creations, but in other existing categories rather than the new categories. And we have theoretical foundation in the category creations literature. So the dependent variable we use is a uh, product updates at the uh, product level and our uh, 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 research design is using difference and differences where for each app we have six months before and six months after the treatment, which is a category creation event. So in this uh, descriptive graph, you can see that before the treatment, the treated group and the control group show really good parallel trend. And we also formally tested this uh, assumption with a supplementary analysis of difference in, in, in differences with multiple time periods, which lend us further confidence that we met the assumption. At the post-treatment period, you can see clearly a gap where the treated group uh, increased their product update significantly compared with a relatively stable trend of the control group. So this gives you a initial sense of how our baseline hypothesis is supported. The formula tested we put in regression analysis with different model specifications, all show the consistent result that category creation has a positive impact on competitive intensity. 
We further test hypothesis two, the moderating effect of category spanning. And indeed, uh, we originalized category spanning as the number of product categories that a total app product spans. And in this setting, we would span from uh, one product category to two and to three. And we also find uh, evidence to support our second hypothesis, which is category spanning weakening the effect of our baseline hypothesis. So to summarize, in this uh, paper, we find two uh, major findings uh, besides uh, other ones in the uh, paper version. First one is organizations compete more intensely in newly created categories than in established ones. And second is that category spanning at the product level weakens the positive impact of category creation on competitive actions because ambiguous identities of these products would mitigate the tension with rivals. We think our paper would contribute to two literatures. The first one is categorization literature. First, while previous research may take the perspective of the audience, in our paper, we take the perspective of competitors. We think it's equally important. And uh, competitive actions is a literature gap in the category literature, uh, which previous uh, scholars haven't really studied. Second one is that we extend product static analysis to be more dynamic. A third one is we leverage category creation as shocks to the category system, because in this literature, previous category scholars suggested that lack of authority in the setting can be a problem. Uh, in that case, you will only need to use informal classification system. But here, Apple, the platform owner, plays the role of this authority and creates new categories and restructure the category system. Uh, finally, we think our okay, maybe just, sum, just summarize that last point because we have to have to move on with the time. Just summarize that last point, please. Sorry. Sounds great. So we also think our paper contributes to competitive dynamics literature uh, in two ways: is the difference between uh, competitive action in new versus uh, established market. Second one is the in uh, fast-paced and knowledge-intensive industries. Um, previous research hasn't really studied uh, a lot. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we welcome your comments. Uh, Thank you send us uh, the email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Wonderful for the presentation.